Welcome to Watching Trees Grow, a podcast by Troutwood. I'm Gene Natale, co-founder and CEO of Troutwood. Today's episode, we're going to talk about charitable giving. I'm going to date stamp the filming. The recording of this episode is the day after Giving Tuesday. Specifically, we are going to explore the tax benefits of your charitable donations. This is a continuation of last week's episode where we discussed giving your time versus giving your money. If you've been following along the podcast, you'll have noticed that we bring uh, members of the Trowood team to join and to participate. We have a company philosophy that our collective experiences, both personally and professionally, make us stronger. Today's episode is a perfect example of that because I am not an accountant. Our CFO, Simone Quinterly, is, and she is far more versed than I in the topic of taxes. Simone, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Jane. I'm excited to definitely talk about the charitable giving portion and how it relates to taxes. Well, I'm excited to learn from you and for our audience to also learn from you. Uh, Simone, can you give us a, a, give our audience a little bit of your background before we dive in? Yep. Hey guys, I'm Simone Quinterly. Um, I've been in the tax industry for about six years now. I kind of got my start by being an entrepreneur. That's how Troutwood actually found me. Um, I'm so excited to help people, um, especially when it comes to their finances. So I'm just really pumped and excited to kind of connect the dots for you when it comes to charitable giving and how that can help you while you're helping others. And Simone, the first time that we grabbed coffee, your energy was contagious. So I'm equally excited for this episode. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, as we were preparing, we discussed going right in with an example. And the example, uh, as you and I talked is to our audience, the our example is going to be a donation to a volunteer fire department. But you can insert your favorite social cause, your favorite charity, and the math will work the same. Here in Pennsylvania, where Simone and I both live, we have thousands of volunteer fire departments that rely on community donations. And my first question to Simone is, what if I want to donate $250 to my local you know, volunteer fire department? I value the work they do. They're, they're heroes in our community. Um, I'm looking forward to writing that check. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're actually looking forward to you writing that check as well, um, <laughs> because they definitely need your donations, especially being a fire department. Uh, as some of the firefighters, they do this for free. You know, they're volunteers. So any donation that you can give will definitely help them. Now, how will that impact you? So basically, giving $250 will just give you kind of a warm spot in your heart, which is great. But unfortunately, due to the limits um, on the taxes, it will not help you lower your tax liability, but it will definitely help that fire department. And I'm sure they'll be counting on you to give that to them each year. That's such an important part of this conversation. And I'm, I'm glad you hit that right out of the gate, Simone. Our conversation about how taxes can work in your favor comes secondary to your caring about the cause you're contributing to. So let's look at three examples. Let's take this pathway. And I think I know the answer to the first one. If I'm a college student making little to no money and I make this $250 donation to our fire department, what happens, Simone? I'm going to assume the answer doesn't change, but I want to just confirm that with you. Yeah, the answer is absolutely still the same. Um, as a college student, that's great. I mean, I think that's just kind of what we're taught right now, like the philanthropy to just give, especially if it's something that resonates with you. And especially, I mean, the fire department, that's something local in your neighborhood that like everybody needs. So that would be a great cause. Um, so like I said before, as a college student, that $250 donation is just something that you did, you're giving to be able to, you know, help somebody else. But that's basically all that is. It's just you giving. So as I age, but my, my, I want to continue, continue to contribute to the fire department. What happens if I'm, let's say 25 years old, making $45,000 and want to make that same $250 contribution? Does anything That's change? actually great. That's great. Um, kudos to getting more money. The older you get, definitely your salary increases. Those are the hopes. So always aim, you know, to the sky. But if you're still giving that $250 and you're making $45,000 a year, that's still not going to help your tax liability um, unless you have other things kind of strapped into that. So what do I mean by that? So um, 
when you are actually working, you have to fill out what is called Form 1040, which is just like your standard income tax statement document that everybody has to do. That's a W-2 employee. Now, you can either take what is called a standard deduction, which is just a deduction that everybody gets for being a living human being on the tax return, or you can itemize. Now, for you to itemize, and most likely if you're 25, you may not have been married yet, you would need to have $12,950 worth of expenses. So now let's just say you have that $250 contribution that goes to the fire department. I can now put that on your Schedule A. You would also need to have a couple of other things like maybe at that time you can definitely purchase a house. I would strongly suggest instead of renting to definitely purchase when you can. And you're kind of more incentivized to be a W-2 employee to purchase a house opposed to being self-employed. But we could talk about that in another podcast. Um, and you'll need to have like mortgage interest. You'll need to have taxes that you pay on that home. Um if you have any medical bills, we will be able to itemize those things like that. But we would have to get you over that $12,950 for that contribution to even count, even if your income has increased to now that $45,000. Okay. Wow. Uh, that <laughs> was a lot of big words. And so when I, when I teach this subject, Simone, taxes is one of the questions that I receive the most or the highest number of questions from a college student audience. It's a confusing topic. I circled standard deduction. You and I are going to do a future episode on standard deduction and what that means. Okay. I also circled $12,950 as you were talking because that's a big number. And my $45,000 salary in the example we were just covering, boy, that's a big piece of it. But I, I want to I wanna keep on our journey here. I'm going to raise the bar once more because you know, I want to know this answer. What if, what if I'm 55 years old making $100,000? And I, I make that maybe let's say I, I raised my two hundred fifty dollars contribution. Now I, I contribute two thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. Does anything change to your original answers if I I do that? So all the right. Sim- yeah. The I will simple be simple. Answer. Okay. I will <laughs> simplify. All right. So when you're in a hundred thousand dollars, it sounds great. You're like, yes, finally got to six figures. But you are in what I call the middle class burn. That's when you're kind of taxed a little bit higher at that hundred thousand dollars. And you probably feel like, you know, you're doing well for yourself. And now maybe your bills probably got a little bigger, too. So you definitely still have to budget. Um, You're definitely going to want to give because if you're able to itemize and itemization is just basically stating I am not taking the standard deduction because I have more expenses that I want to write off. So all you're doing is now we're taking that $2,500 and we're also taking that real estate tax, which is probably a lot more if you're making $100,000 and all the other things. And then that will help reduce your tax liability so that you're not feeling that middle class burn. Because normally if you are making $100,000, you're going to have to fill out your W-4 form. And we could talk about that later um, and tell them to withhold more taxes from your paycheck because most likely you will have a tax liability that year. And that's no fun. Plan on seeing a lot of Simone in April uh, to our audience. <laughs> so, so a couple, you know, just to, to bring this in, making a hundred thousand dollars doesn't mean you're taking home a hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. Uh, We'll we'll take that example deeper in another. But if I heard correctly, Simone, even though I'm making a hundred thousand dollars, which is a ton of money, I contribute two thousand five hundred to my fire department. I don't. There's no charitable benefit. There's no tax benefit to doing so. Here to our audience, unless Simone had said something important, you choose not to receive the standard deduction, which I have circled in my notes as twelve thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars, big dollar amount. So if you choose to itemize, that is the number you have to be more than. So for our student audience, this is a way down the road conversation, but to our educators, our parents, and our grandparents, that's the number you circle if you are single. Simone, what's the number if I'm married? Um, If you're married, the number is $25,900. So those are targets. And let me, I just want to really be clear on this. This should not change your giving. We just want you to understand the toolkit. That fire department appreciates the $250 independent uh, of how it is handled on your end. And remember, we're walking through the path. I'm a high school student. I'm a college student. 
my time is more valuable than my money. We then jumped to a 25 year old making $45,000 and learned that that standard deduction is so high that, that it's unlikely that a $45,000 on paper salary, you'll be able to make that kind of, of donation. So then we jumped to a hundred thousand and learned kind of a similar path. From there, the conversation really changes. Takeaways for the audience, circle that $12,950. If you're married, circle that $25,900. Understand how it works. A, a conversation that I have frequently with friends in the industry, uh, kind of mentors in my life, as you, that equation of time versus money, it then ultimately changes to, to giving away your money versus giving away your time. And I think that's a, a great benefit. We'll do a future episode on the legacy of um, just maybe Milton Hershey and how his legacy lives on today because of plans that he made back when he was alive. Simone, I have two final questions for you. Okay. Uh, independent of, of, actually, I guess I shouldn't say independent. If I make this $250, if I'm a college student, or if I'm a 25-year-old and I make my $250 contribution to the fire department, or the charity of my choosing, should I keep a record of that donation or do I not need to if it's below the standard deduction? Okay. Um, that's actually a great question. Honestly, the only time you really need that is if you are going to actually use that on your tax return. So if you are going to itemize and why this is important is because audits do happen with the IRS. And if by any chance you are randomly selected for an audit, you want to make sure you have a paper trail, which is extremely important because if you do not have a paper trail, and unfortunately I've seen these things happen just being in practice, they will throw out that entire amount. So then let's just say you itemize and your itemization is $15,000. But since we didn't have proper documentation for maybe our charitable contributions, now we might be knocked back down to that $12,950. That, that's helpful. I'm going to, hearing your first the, your first part of that answer, I'm going to suggest to our audience, keep it, write it down. It's too easy to do. I, I personally use, you know, Google Drive. My, my wife and I track our charitable contributions each year and our donations. And it it's worth having just in case. Simone, I'm thinking specifically of our student audience with this second question. And if I'm a student passionate about a particular social cause, and I say, hmm, this is an organization that also does some hiring, would you have any thoughts, suggestions, advice on how a young person can take that volunteering and use it to help get a job in the 501c3 space? Oh, absolutely. So you have to think about it right now as a student, the most valuable thing that you have to give, like Jean said, really is your time. And you're already hungry, ambitious. You've already put in the work. You know what you want to do. It's now time to get out there and actually do it. So for you to actually go in and volunteer your time, they're going to be able to see the hard work, the dedication, um, the input that they need, especially from a younger set of eyes with a whole different perspective, like your generation does things differently than the generation before you. And that's absolutely needed, especially like in a corporate culture um, or a nonprofit standpoint as well. So just make sure you're donating your time because that could potentially lead into a full-time position because they're going to understand how valuable you are. You probably already made connections and friendships with some of the people in there and they're not going to want to lose you. So definitely donating your time could turn into some major coins when it's time to graduate. And a high level of satisfaction and contentment working with an organization that you care so deeply about that you were working for for free when you were volunteering your time right uh, it was fun I, before the episode we were talking about some of the charities that are very active on college campuses the, the habitat for humanity food bank animal shelters but there are so many great social causes pick the one that matters to you uh, recognize the the impact and the influence that your voice can have and that your actions can have um when paired with that voice. Simone, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for tuning in to Watching Trees Grow, a podcast by Troutwood.